Hello everybody, you're also welcome back to the channel of Eclectic Chiesa. If this is not your first time of being here, then I thank you so much for coming back. Truly, you guys know that I always appreciate it when you guys return for me. However, if this is your first time of being here, then I so heartily welcome you as well. I actually urge you to stick around because there's always a lot of fun over here. Either way, very, very interesting. So do stick around. Welcome. Welcome to the family. Sit down and relax. And I promise you, it'll be worth a listen. My name is Vanessa Danso Eradra Chewa. And today, today I'll be covering the topic of baby naming, or also known as Dinto. So if you like this type of videos, just comment to the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you're thinking. I really like to know your opinions on this one. You can like this video. You can share it. You can give this a big thumbs up and show some love. And until then, you can just enjoy the story. And I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Bye. Today, we are going to dive into the topic of baby naming, or also known as Dinto in the Akan language. Now, after we've covered the topic of traditional marriage, it only made sense to cover the topic of baby naming, right? Since babies kind of are the next big milestone after marriage ceremonies. Nowadays, when a child is born, most of us can acknowledge that the child has at least four names. The first name being the Christian name, which sort of has a foreign ring to it, then the second name being the day name, depending on which day the child was born, then the third name usually given to a child to honor someone in the family, and the fourth name being the surname. The order in which the names are placed is relative and up to the parents and family. But why all these names are given does remain a mystery to most, so do allow me to enlighten you. <laughs> So, traditionally, the way our ancestors did it, after an Akan baby is born, he or she is kept indoors for eight days. The eighth day is a day of the naming ceremony, or also known as Dinto, which must begin and end before sunrise. The first name received is called the Kadi, or soul name, and this is determined by the day of the week that the child was born. So, for Sunday borns, that would be Kwesi and Akusya. For Monday borns, that would be Kwejo and Ajua. For Tuesday borns, that would be Kwabna and Abna. For Wednesday borns, that would be Kwaku and Ekuya. For Thursday borns, that would be Yao and Ya. For Friday borns, that would be Kofi and Efia. And for Saturday borns, that would be Kwame and Ama. Now, this is because before the wind of Christianity blew over the land of Ghana, our ancestors believed in Nyame and Nyamewa the great god and the great goddess who together constitute the supreme being in the Akan culture and they place 11 of their children over the seven days of the week. The children of the supreme being are the goddesses and gods 
the spirit forces operating throughout nature and all of creation. In the Akan culture, they are called abosum or deities. The various spirits carry different spiritual qualities of their parents, the mother, father, supreme being, and this reality impacts the newborn. Because the names of the days of the week in the Akan culture indicate which spirit, and therefore which spiritual force, governs the particular day he or she was born onto, and therefore which spiritual qualities of the great father Nyame and the great mother Nyamewa are transferred to and carried by the Oka or soul of the child born upon that day. Next, I will briefly discuss the names of the days of the week in their Khan culture and their spirits who govern the different days. All females and males in Akan civilization received their kradi according to the day of the week they were born. Awusi and Esi are the spirits that are in charge of Sunday and they govern the sun. The children born on Sunday are called Kwesi and Akusya and their main attributes are leadership and protectors. Next is Ajo. She is a spirit that is in charge of Monday and she governs the moon. The children born on Monday are called Kwejo and Ajwa and their main attributes are calmness and peacefulness. Next are Abena and Bena, and they are the spirits that are in charge of Tuesday, and they govern the planet Mars. The children born on Tuesday are called Kwabena and Abena, and their main attributes are fierceness and compassion. Next are Ekuya and Awuku, and they are in charge of Wednesday, and they govern the planet Mercury. The children born on Wednesday are called Kweku and Ekuya, and their main attributes are advocacy and control. Then we get to Yao, Ya, and Aba, and they are the spirits in charge of Thursday, and they govern the planet Jupiter. The children born on Thursday are called Yao and Ya, and their main attributes are confrontational and aggressiveness. Next is Afi, and she is the spirit that is in charge of Friday, and she governs the planet Venus. The children born on Friday are called Kufi and Ifia, and they are sweet and compassionate. And lastly, we get to Amen and Amenmen, and they are the spirits in charge of Saturday, and they govern the planet Saturn. The children born on Saturday are called Kwame and Ama, and their attributes are wisdom. These Akradi we just covered greatly affects the spirit of the Akan female and male, for it carries the power which works to align the spirit of the individual with his or her divine qualities. This is one reason why the Dinto is performed on the eighth day. For example, if a child is born on Kwesiada or also known as Sunday, then the Dinto is performed eight days later on the following Kwesiada. In this manner, the spirit of that particular day, Awusi, lends its energy and consciousness to the proceedings. The child also receives its formal name or good ideal name, which is also known as Dimpa on the eighth day. The formal name further defines the function of the child in the world as it relates to his or her specific ancestral clan and his or her potential for manifesting wisdom and influence. The Dimpa carries the vibrations that will empower the individual to properly incorporate divine law and restore divine balance throughout his or her life according to ancestral protocol. Finally, the surname as we know it today was not really added onto the name as a sequel, but it was more used for identification purposes, as in which house the child comes from. For example, my name would be Ajwa Chewa from the house of Busuya down so. And no, there was no Christian names back then, so Vanessa would completely be off the table. The elders invoke Nyame and Nyamewa and pour libation to Asase Efia, also known as Earth Mother or Earth Goddess, or also known as Asase Ya. Then they also call you upon the spirits and the Nananom and Samafo, which are the honored ancestral spirits, and they are all needed to assist with the proper naming of the child. After the name is acquired, the infant is given to an elder from the father's side of the family who announces the Ekadi and Dimpa to the family for the very first time. There are two cups ritually utilized during the ceremony. One cup contains water and the other Ensa or alcohol drink. The elder then dips his index finger into the water and places it on the mouth of the infant saying, When you say it is water, 
it is water. He then dips his index finger into the insa or alcohol and places it on the mouth of the infant saying, when you say it is insa, it is insa. This is repeated three times. This is done to instill within the infant a consciousness of morality, the necessity of always living in harmony with the truth for all of her or his life. Whether the consequences of truthfulness leave a pleasant taste in your mouth, water, or a difficult taste in your mouth, insa, truthfulness should at all times be upheld. The remainder of the water and insa in the two cups is then mixed together and given to the parents, that they may participate in the ritual in unity with their child. By doing so, the parents are confirming the importance of the moral lesson taught to the child and at the same time vowing to reinforce this lesson throughout the life of the child. The stability of the family is directly related to the stability of the community and the parents are making their vow before Nyame, Nyamewa, Asase Efia, the spirits and the Nananum and Samanfo and the family. The full name of the newborn is spoken to each member of the community and each member sips some of the ensa as a show of respect for the child and as a corporate gesture towards the newborn's health. A meal is then shared by all. As Akanfo or Akan people, we recognize the name to be intimately expressive of the function for which Nyamiwa Nyame has conceived and fashioned us and where Asasi Efia, the Earth Mother, has born us. Well, it seems as though we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned quite a bit because it was kind of the point. If you have any more comments or you have any more questions, just drop them in the comments below and I will try to answer them for you. Until then, you can just take care of yourselves. Be kind to one another and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.